everybody. Welcome. Here we go. It is that time again. Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc., Today is Tuesday, June 27, 2023. So nice to have you all with me. Uh, by the way, that track that I opened with, that is the song Faded uh, from a German band called uh, Heels Throne, who were uh, on the program with us uh, recently, Skyping in, of course. <laughs> but uh, I love that track so much. I actually played that at the end of yesterday's show and didn't get, you know, didn't have time to play the whole thing. But uh, that's my favorite song from them. And I just love that. That's one of those songs that just gets stuck in my head. So I was like, Uh, You know what? I I didn't get to play the whole thing yesterday. I'm going to open with it today. So I've got some political song parodies I could play, but, uh, you know, or sometimes we feature music from upcoming guests, but I just, I I had to play that today. So I love that song so much. That is Faded. Uh, Heels Thrown, it's uh, H-E-L apostrophe S and then Thrown. So it's like Hell's Thrown, but with only one E. (laughs) So there you go. Great, great German band. Look them up online. Uh, All their stuff is really, really good, but that's my personal favorite. Uh, And speaking of music, uh, coming up today on the show in the second hour, we have a great in-studio guest, Alex Cormier. Uh, I don't know if uh, he's of any relation to Paul E.C., Paul Cormier, or Paul Cormier, as I like to call him, but uh, I think Cormier is a pretty common name around here, actually. So probably, probably no relation. We'll see. But uh, he's going to be coming in in the second hour. He did appear on the morning show not too long ago and uh, just very, very impressive. So we invited him to, to uh, join us on this program. Uh, he'll be here in the second hour, Numero Dos, today. So really looking forward to that. He's going to come in. Like I said, he's going to bring his guitar. He's going to play for us and we'll chat a little bit, get to know him and so forth. So that's coming up in the second hour. Uh, we have some uh, other uh, things to get to in the first hour, of course. Uh, and uh, you can be a part of that if you give us a call on the studio line, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. Uh, you can email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and fully enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. I do want to, well, let's do this uh, next. We'll say hello to everybody in the uh, Facebook live chat. See who we have in here so far. Mike from Queen City Cabinetry joins us. Of course, uh, uh, Queen City Cabinetry, one of our great sponsors here at WMNH and the historic Sunbeam Mall. Uh, But Mike also is one of our co-hosts on Retro Spectrum Radio every Friday night. Retro Spectrum Radio with Pauly C. Fridays from 8 to 11 p.m. I have the honor and privilege of being one of Paul's uh, co-hosts on that show along with TJ, Steve, and Mike from Queen City Cabinetry. By the way, if you missed uh, last Friday's show, check it out in the archive at WMNHradio.org. We were also joined by Kyle Heavey, host of Off the Mark Sports here at WMNH. So it was a lot of fun, fun, fun times. Uh, Miriam Bannis joins us in the chat and says, good afternoon. Hello. Also, Mary LeMay joins us in the chat room. Hello, Mary. Uh, Crystal, our friend from the great state of Illinois, joins us. Uh, Alex Whiteley, uh, one of our friends from the UK, says, what up, all you beautiful people? Uh, Alex, beautiful uh, British name. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Alex Cormier joining us in the second hour. I didn't know it was a British name uh, specifically. Uh, that had uh, that had not occurred to me, uh, sir. Uh, but uh, but I, uh, I will uh, defer to you on that. Um, I, I, uh, I think, well, actually couple things <laughs> this isn't there's a there's a big story that i want to talk about and it's not necessarily the one that you're thinking of but something local sort of it has to do with national politics but um <laughs> this is on newsweek.com and if you're locally here in new hampshire this story is all over the place but national media also covering it i don't know if, uh, how much of how many of you are aware of this but in the republican race for the uh, nomination uh, there is not only uh, Donald John Trump, uh, former president, the front runner, the prohibitive favorite, and as I refer to him, the presumptive, presumptive Republican nominee, because I'm sure he's going to be the nominee. 
Uh, but uh, there's this other guy uh, from uh, the great state of Florida, uh, uh, governor there, uh, Ron DeSantis. You might have heard of him, or you might have heard him uh, referred to as Ron DeSantis. Apparently, you can say his name either way. He says his name either way. Uh, just like the word either. You can say it either or either. You can say it either way, either way, either way. Um, I usually say either. I don't know why I chose to say either. Once in a while, I like to mix it up, as uh, EZG would say. But uh, this is from Newsweek.com. Ron DeSantis, or DeSantis, reprimanded by Republican women in key primary state. And guess what primary state that happens to be? New Hampshire. And why is it key? Because we're first in the nation. Uh, no matter what Biden and the Democrats try to do, uh, our governor, uh, Chris Sununu, insists that we will be first no matter what. But uh, uh, apparently today, right now, as we speak, both uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida and uh, the former President Trump are in New Hampshire with competing events. But uh, this does not sit well with everyone. It says here, Ron DeSantis was called out by a Republican women's group in early voting New Hampshire. By the way, I have noticed this now. Because the DNC keeps talking about South Carolina now going first, uh, some media outlets are no longer referring to New Hampshire as first in the nation. But now, as they do here in this Newsweek article, they refer to New Hampshire as, quote, early voting. And I object to that. We are not early voting. We are first voting. Well, unless you count Iowa, but that's a caucus. So who cares? I mean, no disrespect, of course, to my favorite conservative, Eric Pilcher. But uh, seriously, it's a caucus. It doesn't matter. But we are we are not early voting. We are first voting in the primaries. And uh, I understand that there are forces trying to take that away from the, us. But as I always say, and I, I paraphrase uh, Charlton Heston when I say this, uh, you will have to pry the first in the nation status of the New Hampshire primary from our cold, dead hands. And, uh, or you just, you know, or South Carolina just goes first uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. I don't know. Anyway, just I happen to notice that in this article. I keep seeing that now, referring to New Hampshire as one of the early states instead of the first. It bothers me. I'm taking it very personally, my friends. I, uh, uh, and, you know, I think we all should be. I think we should be united in this. Okay. Let me uh, reset here. I got I got worked up. I'm unleashed. I got worked up. Okay, so Ron DeSantis was called out by... You know what? I am going to self-edit this as I read this. Check this out. This is why I'm in afternoon drive. Watch this. Ron DeSantis was called out by a Republican women's group in... First in the nation primary state, New Hampshire, <laughs> after scheduling an event on the same day and time as a major fundraiser for the group headlined by his chief political rival, Donald Trump. And the decision has driven the group apart. In a statement uh, Thursday, uh, the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women, or NHFRW, by the way, I didn't know this organization. I'm embarrassed to say this. I should know this. I'm in New Hampshire. I didn't know this organization uh, existed. Uh, no offense, uh, ladies. Uh, criticized uh, the Florida governor and Republican presidential hopeful for an alleged attempt to pull focus from the group's annual Lilac Luncheon in Concord later this month. By the way, again, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know about the Lilac Luncheon. Sounds great. Uh, although maybe not for someone like me with allergies. Uh, I don't know if uh, I'd want to be around a bunch of lilacs. They're pretty to look at, but they might make me sneeze. Uh, the event, they said, was a significant fundraiser for the organization and a key stop for candidates seeking to court Republicans' favor ahead of the state's critical first-in-the-nation primary. Oh, my goodness! Okay, they've redeemed themselves in the second paragraph. They do use the phrase. That was not me editing this time. They actually use the phrase first in the nation primary. Thank you, Newsweek. Thank you. Uh, earlier this week, the group announced it had officially sold out of tickets for the June 27 event in what the organization described as the largest lilac luncheon crowd in the organization's near 80-year history. This has been going on for 80 years. I didn't know it was a thing. Again, I'm very embarrassed by that. I won't forget next time. I'll remember the lilac luncheon. I'm going to put it in my calendar so I don't forget again. 
Uh, several days later, however, Fox News reported DeSantis planned to hold an event in nearby Hollis at the exact same date and time as the luncheon, Bucking, and that was Bucking with a B. I like to be very uh, clear and concise uh, so I don't get in, into trouble. Uh, a long-standing tradition in New Hampshire politics not to overshadow events put on by in-state organizations. Oopsie. NHFRW leadership was quick to reprimand DeSantis for the decision. Elizabeth Gerard, the group's president, said in a statement, quote, The Lilac Luncheon is the preeminent fundraiser of the largest grassroots Republican women's organization in the state, and funds go directly to electing, educating, and empowering Granite State Republican women running for state and local offices, unquote. Oh, but there's more. Quote, This attempt to pull focus from our Lilac Luncheon only diminishes the efforts of the Republican women in New Hampshire who are volunteers working hard to provide opportunities for our membership to have access to all the candidates, unquote. Other members of the group put their grievances with the governor in more direct terms. Uh, events director Christine Peters said in a statement, quote, to have a candidate come in and distract from the most special event NHFRW holds in the year is unprecedented, unquote. Oh, there's a whole uh, there's a whole statement here. Wait, how long is this? Because you know what I'm thinking, and if you're a longtime listener, you know you already know what I'm thinking, right? I could read the statement. I could read the entire statement, but I could do it in the form of a dramatic reading. Let's see. How long is this, though? If it's if it's like multi-pages, I'm not going to do it. Can I just download this and open it? Uh, this is a pain. I don't know if I'll be able to... Uh, I don't know if I'll even be able to do this. Uh, might have to save it for another day. Wait, let me try... Sorry, guys. Let me try this really quickly here. I'm just trying to see if I can make this uh, big so I can actually read it. Oh, here we go. How long is this? Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Here we go. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Make it seem like a big deal. Probably nobody even actually cares. <laughs> Probably everyone's rolling their eyes going, oh, God, Matt's going to do one of his dramatic readings. He's the only one who actually enjoys this. I know that's not true. People have told me they think it's fun. Even John Hopwood, and he's not very free with the compliments. Okay, so this is the statement. From the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women for immediate release. Here, here we go. Ready? All right, here it is. A dramatic reading. I haven't done one of these in a long time, actually. And by the way, the title is NHFRW Disappointed in DeSantis Campaign Decision to Host Town Hall During the Historic Lilac Luncheon. <clears throat> Dateline. Concord, New Hampshire. For those of you uh, out of towners listening online, that's our state capital, if you didn't know. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women released the following statement to express their disappointment with the DeSantis campaign for scheduling a town hall meeting in Hollis in opposition to their historic Lilac Luncheon, featuring President Donald J. Trump, 45th President of the United States, scheduled for Tuesday, June 27, 2023, in Concord. President Elizabeth Gerard states, quote, The Lilac Luncheon is the preeminent fundraiser of the largest grassroots women's Republican organization in the state, and funds raised go directly to electing, educating, and empowering Granite State Republican women running for state and local offices. This attempt to pull focus from our Lilac Luncheon only diminishes the efforts of the Republican women in New Hampshire who are volunteers working hard to provide opportunities for our membership to have access to all of the candidates. 
other Republican presidential candidates coming to the state next week recognize the longstanding tradition of this special event and have graciously scheduled around it, allowing NHFRW and its members the opportunity to showcase all that we are doing for Republican women in the first in the nation primary process. Notes Secretary Emily Tomasi. Quote, In 25 years of running Republican events in New Hampshire, including many lilac luncheons, it has always been a New Hampshire hallmark to be considerate when scheduling events. To have a candidate come in and distract from the most special event, the most special, only the most special event NHFRW holds in the year is unprecedented, remarked events director Christine Peters. In keeping with our bylaws, the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women is neutral in the Republican primary. And we look forward to hosting all the major Republican primary candidates over the course of this primary season. We would kindly ask the DeSantis campaign reschedule their town hall to not directly conflict with the Lilac Luncheon and respect the efforts of our organization. And scene. There you go. That's the full statement. That's my dramatic reading, my interpretation of the full statement. Wow, that was exhausting. That's why I haven't done one of those in a while. Anyway, Ron DeSantis, boy, I'll tell you, that guy. <laughs> what more can you say, really? That guy. I could say a lot more. I could say a lot more about Ron DeSantis, actually. Some of it wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, for the air, unfortunately. Uh, our friend uh, Crystal from the great state of Illinois says in the chat room, I think first in the nation should be voted upon and not the Democrats dictating the change to benefit themselves because Biden did well there in 2020, referring to South Carolina. Uh, and they assume they will again. Uh, popularity polls for Biden have been consistently low, so how he can assume anything is delusional on his part. Uh, we have a call. Uh, looks like our friend uh, Ron is on the line. Hi, Ron. Hey, Matt. Yeah, it's just a nonsense call. I was going to say, read that again, but do it in your smooth jazz voice. Ooh, I could. Uh, that's, uh, that would be, uh, I don't know, that might be a little too sexy uh, for uh, <laughs> Afternoon Drive. That, that would I be, just uh... wanted to say hey, that's all. All right, Ron. Uh, we appreciate the call. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. I don't know. I could. <laughs> I could do it. I'm, I'm almost tempted, but I, I uh, have other things I want to get to, too. We might, do, we might do that, though, before the week is out. Maybe, maybe for the Friday show. We'll do something fun. <laughs> um, oh, our friend uh, Chris Rose from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts joins us in the chat and says, good afternoon. Hello, Chris. Also, Isaac Banks, of course, from Greensboro, North Carolina, says, give afternoon, hashtag Matt Connerton. Well, a uh, give afternoon to you, too, uh, Isaac Banks. Uh, let's see. Uh, the studio line is open, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, you can also text me at 617-917-4476. Um, the, uh, I, I want to make sure we get this in the, the, the big story that I wanted to talk about today. And no, it's not, uh, uh, when I say the big story, uh, some of you might be uh, assuming that I'm, uh, referring to the audio that was released of, uh, Trump, uh, allegedly, uh, showing a secret document, uh, to, uh, to some folks and having a good, uh, chuckle about it and so forth. Uh, but, uh, no, we, I mean, we may get to that this week, but, um, it is interesting to listen to, certainly, and not uh, particularly surprising. But uh, no, I, uh, not that. Uh, something else. Uh, this is actually I have a very positive story, and it involves the Supreme Court. And you know, if if you're uh, if you're a consistent listener, you might have heard my segment last week where I was talking about the Supreme Court, and it was pretty negative. I was being uh, a bit uh, pessimistic and cynical 
shall we say, regarding the Supreme Court and some of the ethics uh, concerns that have uh, arisen. (laughs) Uh, I had a lot to say about it, but uh, today uh, we've got a very positive story regarding the Supreme Court. Um, The Supreme Court decided in a 6-3 decision uh, to effectively reject uh, what is called the uh, state legislature. Oh, what's the actual? Uh, the independent state legislature theory or doctrine. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know what that is. Oh, the independent state legislature theory is is what they seem to be calling it uh, in the media. But I've also heard it referred to as the independent uh, state legislature doctrine. Now, what what that is, just um, just briefly, and then we'll. I mean, it's uh, uh, if you don't know, I'll give you the 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 quick uh, summation of what that actually is and what it's supposed to do, and then we'll get into we'll get into the actual story. Uh, and I'm I'm really glad. This is again a very positive story. This is a, a positive thing. I'm very much happy that the Supreme Court voted the way that they did. Uh, six to three, uh, three conservative justices voting with the liberals, including uh, Chief Justice John Roberts, who wrote the uh, wrote the opinion, the uh, uh, majority opinion. Uh, also, uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett and Justice Brett Kavanaugh, the other two conservatives that also uh, voted uh, to reject the uh, independent state legislature theory. So what what this is, this theory is, independent state legislature theory, and the reason it's come up, and it's been around for a while, actually. It's not new. The idea, the concept isn't new. But in the wake of the 2020 election, um, and this, this has to do with a case coming out of North Carolina, but uh, the reason this has been pushed and why some in the Republican Party have tried to push this going forward is, according to this uh, theory, state legislatures should have, they would argue, the power to make whatever rules and laws they want to about their elections. But what this would actually be used for in practical terms is, and by the way, state legislatures do have the power to do that, uh, but not an unchecked power. So in other words, Individual states can make rules and laws regarding their elections that can be uh, struck down by their by state courts within their state, their state Supreme Court. You know, if, if they find something violates uh, the Constitution, uh, including their their state constitution, obviously. So so there is kind of a check on that. Um, independent state legislature theory says there should be no check on it. These independent state legislatures should be able to do whatever they want, make whatever rules they want. But but in practical terms, the reason this has become such a hot issue recently is because those who are proponents of this concept, what they want to do in terms of these state legislatures having full control is they want to be able to reject the vote of the people in a presidential election if the people in their state don't vote the way that these legislatures want them to. So, say, for example, it's the year 2024, and the state of Georgia, once again, uh, votes for Joe Biden. And so those electoral college votes would go to Biden. Those delegates would go to Biden. But Georgia, under the independent state legislature uh, theory, uh, if there is no check on that power, they have they have the power to control the election and there's no check on it. The, the, the state Supreme Court isn't allowed to get involved. The uh, if if the I, I assume it's Republicans who are in control in, in Georgia and the state legislature, um, they could say, well, no, we uh, we don't agree with uh, this vote tally. And so we're going to reject that and we're going to vote. The state legislature is going to vote on who we're sending for delegates and who they will uh, vote for because, you know, the delegates go and they vote on behalf of us in the electoral college system. So uh, so they could say, okay, well, the people voted for Biden. We don't like it. So now we're going to vote here in the state legislature. And if being Republican controlled, Republican majority, the state legislature would then vote for whoever uh, I assume it'll be Trump, whoever the uh, Republican nominee is, 
And then Georgia, even though the people of Georgia may have voted for Biden, as they did in 2020, uh, the Republican state legislature would have the power to say, no, actually, we're going for Trump and that's it. And those delegate delegates would go to Trump. Um, so that is the problem with independent state legislature theory. Uh, uh, it would allow for any state with a Republican-controlled uh, state legislature to reject if if the state uh, goes for the Democrat in a presidential elect election. And by the way, the inverse would also be true. Under independent state legislature theory, if you have, um, say you have a state where the Democrats control the legislature, but a Republican wins that state in a presidential election, the Democrats, under independent state legislature theory, if, again, there is no check by that state Supreme Court, the Democrats could say, well, you know, we don't like it that our state went for the Republican. So we're going to vote. We're democratically controlled. We're going to vote and uh, give it to whoever the Democratic candidate is. So, you know, it can work both ways. But the reason this has become such a concern is, um, and this is why it is good that the Supreme Court struck this down, is in theory, under that theory, any state legislature could at any point just reject the will of the people in a presidential election and say, all right, well, we don't agree with that. So now, or find an excuse, right? Well, well, we think there might have been voter fraud. There's no proof. There's no evidence. But uh, we think there might have been. So we're just going to go ahead and vote ourselves and, and take care of it that way, right? That's a hell of a lot of power and quite a lot of disenfranchisement. So this is a good ruling and good uh, good for those conservatives who voted with the liberals on this. Uh, I'm, I'm relieved about this, frankly, because I've been concerned about it. Oh, hello to uh, Chris from Edgewise, who joins us in the chat room. So again, this is from Politico. This will explain it a little deeper. I, I hope I explain it well, as I understand it. Again, I'm not a legal expert, but that's basically my understanding of the case. So uh, Supreme Court denies state legislatures the unchecked power to set election rules. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the justices affirmed the power of state courts to review state laws governing federal elections, a decision that rejects a once-fringe legal theory pushed by Republicans. By the way, that doesn't mean—I mean, look, you could have a state where the legislature says, well, we want the power to reject uh, the vote of the people and vote on, on uh, this ourselves— um, and you could have a state Supreme Court that decides to affirm that instead of knocking that down. But that would probably only happen in states that are very red to begin with, where it wouldn't even come up, where, you know, the Republican is going to carry that state regardless in a presidential election. You know what I mean? Like in, in Louisiana, you wouldn't even worry about it to begin with or, or Arkansas or Alabama. You just wouldn't it wouldn't even matter, actually. But let's look at this. So the Supreme Court today rebuffed a legal theory that argued that state legislatures have the authority to set election rules with little oversight from state courts, a major decision that turns away a conservative push to empower state legislatures. By a 6-3 to three vote, the court rejected the independent state legislature theory in a case about North Carolina's congressional map. The once fringe legal theory broadly argued that state courts have little or no authority to question state legislatures on election laws for federal contests. The court's decision in Moore versus Harper closes the path to what could have been a radical overhaul of America's election laws. A particularly robust reading of the theory, which the court turned aside, would have empowered state legislatures to make decisions on all aspects of elections, from congressional lines to how people register to vote and cast a ballot, without any opportunity for challengers to contest those decisions in state courts under state laws or constitutions. Opponents of the theory argued that it could have led to unchecked partisan gerrymandering and laws that would make it harder for people to vote. So that's important to understand, too. This isn't just about state legislatures being able to override the will of the people in a, in a federal election like president of the United States. It's not just about that. But that is what is driven, that concern is what has driven this issue. And the desire among some people to use this theory to subvert our elections in the future. 
That is what has driven this. But there are many other things involved here. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the court's opinion, joined by the three liberal justices, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, and Ketanji Brown-Jackson, along with two conservatives, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. Justices Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Neil Gorsuch dissented. In doing so, the nation's top court maintained the power of state courts to review election laws under state constitutions while urging federal courts to, quote, not abandon their duty to exercise judicial review, unquote. Conservative legal activists backed by some GOP operatives had urged the high court to broaden the power of state legislatures, often under Republican control in recent years. A Supreme Court decision adopting the theory would have upended congressional elections and potentially the presidential election heading into 2024. Yeah, so again, too, not just the presidential election, but say say you've got a congressional seat up for re-election in a particular state, and a candidate wins, but the state legislature doesn't want that candidate to win. So they say, well, you know what? We're just going to, yeah, we, we, we don't like that outcome. We're, we know better, <laughs> effectively. We're going to vote on, the, on this ourselves. We're going to take control of this. We're going to choose our candidate. Um, it says here, but the Supreme Court concluded that the U.S. Constitution allows state courts to continue to interpret state constitutions to put limits on lawmakers' powers. Roberts uh, wrote, referring to the provision of the federal constitution that formed the basis for the independent state uh, legislature theory, quote, the elections clause does not insulate state legislature, uh, legislatures from the ordinary exercise of state judicial review, unquote. Roberts's majority opinion does not give state courts free reign to impose any sort of limits on legislature's action. The chief justice offered a warning of sorts to state judges not to run wild, but the decision issued today left open the question of when such a state court ruling would go too far. Roberts wrote, quote, The questions presented in this area are complex and context-specific. We hold only that state courts may not tress, uh, transgress the ordinary bounds of judici judicial review, such as they arrogate to themselves the power vested in the state legislatures to regulate federal elections, unquote. Despite that caveat, the opinion represents a major defeat for proponents of the state legislature theory. I'm sorry, the independent state legislature theory, in part because Roberts won a uh, a six justice majority for his opinion and effectively sidelined three of the court's most conservative justices on the issue. The court's decision to issue a definitive opinion came as a surprise to some court watchers. The roots, and like I said, I was concerned about this. The roots of the case were GOP legislatures challenging a decision issued by the North Carolina State Supreme Court, which ruled that legislatively drawn lines amounted to an illegal partisan gerrymander. Uh, we have a call. We'll grab this. Sounds like someone's uh, standing in some wind. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? This is uh, your shadow. Me and my shadow. It's the racist. It's the racist. Oh, uh, don't be racist. Uh, we don't like that here. No, uh, no, 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 not on the air. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, we yeah. We can have a discussion. By the way, I I just want to say that, you know, I do like you, and um, there's just something very special about you that I like. Uh, but I do disagree with all your politics, of course. Uh, 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 yeah, but I'm not a politic it. man. Right. Yeah. By the way, with your permission, uh, at uh, I'm only going to be here, you know, because I don't want to waste your time, but mm, I, I want you. your fans from New Hampshire to, um, you know, go to my YouTube page and, uh, you know, whatever they want to do. They want to say nice things or they want to harass me. It's okay. I'm a man. I could take it. I thought you wanted everyone to leave your uh, YouTube page because you're upset with them for not supporting your show. Well, you know what happened? Uh, I think I got a little too sensitive for my own britches. Oh. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're in the public eye like you and I are, yes, we have to take shots, you know? It's part of the routine. It is. Well, that's... Well, you know, I've come a long way since uh, meeting you. You've really grown. 
It's amazing. I think so. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking wow. forward to doing my show on the Internet. And uh -huh. look, I'm not in competition with you. Oh, thank uh, goodness. You know, I think you've accomplished uh, a lot of things. You know, you're... You know, you're on terrestrial radio, you know. Mm -hmm. You're on the FM band. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, all those things I said, uh, you know, just squash them, you know. Sure. Like you were a public axo and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? I want to squash that. Wow. But I, I, I would still have arguments with you and disagreements with you. I don't want yes. anybody to think that, you know, I'm like kissing up to you or anything. Right. You no. have, uh, believe it or not, have helped me. In my radio career, I have which I've been doing on the internet, but this time it's going to be all out. Wow! We're going to have the greatest show ever, and I want your people in New Hampshire to, uh, you know, whatever they want to do. I could take it. I'm a man. Wow! You're a That's man. That's right. You're a man. You can take it. That's you, right. I'm wow. a tough New Yorker. Wow! Taxi tested tough. Wow! Taxi tested. Is yeah. that what you said? Oh, wow! Well. All what right. Was that uh, Matt? You said, did you say taxi tested? That's right. I have a question. How come for the longest time you, you tried to hide the fact that that was your former profession, but now all of a sudden you're uh, embracing it again? Well, it's not that I'm exactly embracing it. It's just that um, a lot of people don't have respect for cab drivers. Oh. And I didn't want to get caught in that, in that scenario. I but, see. Uh, I was very proud of what I did. Uh, for a long time, and uh, it was one of the most dangerous jobs in the top ten. Not even cops in the city would do it, and I dealt with a lot of cops in the city that were our dispatchers and worked for our radio group. Oh, I see. I see. All right. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. if it was because, because Jer I, I noticed Jerry Robinson, he keeps uh, bringing it up uh, in his uh, YouTube well, videos. Well, Jerry Robinson doesn't mean anything to me, you know. Yeah. You know, I'll be cordial and respectful to you and everything, but mm -hmm. I don't need to be respectful and cordial to Jerry. Mm. He just came out of the woodwork, and mm -hmm. he's upset that I kicked him off my face crap page. Well, I think he's, he's upset. Like whining like a little girl. I think he's upset because uh, you had invited him to be a part. You, 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 he was the first recruit into your uh, rock and roll army, and then all of a sudden uh, uh, you deposed him, and I think he's uh, upset. I think in this kind of business, uh, Matt, mm. um, you know, you, you, you meet a lot of people, as mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you, you know, you, 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 you welcome into your circle, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, for whatever reasons you have, uh, you dethrone them. Uh -huh. I think that's a normal part of radio, being a radio the, uh, broadcaster like, like you and, and me. So you're saying... We meet people. Yes. They don't... You know, they don't jive with us, and then we disown them. So Jerry, Rob <laughs> Jerry Robinson did not jive with you is what you're saying. I don't remember the reason, Matt. Mm. I, I really wish I knew. Yeah. But there were a lot of people I threw up with face crap. I think my list is like 500, uh -huh. that many, Yeah. that I had disagreements with. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of my – well – Maybe with you, I don't know. Like, let me ask you a question. How yeah. many people have you thrown off your social media page? Oh, I, I almost never uh, block. Uh, it's very rare that I uh, ever block anyone. I, I like, uh, I don't have a lot of haters, but I appreciate the ones I have. It's uh, it's actually good. I think it's fun to have uh, haters. Uh, so yeah, I, I hate you. Yeah, thank you, yes. So, uh, right, and I, and I know that makes you happy. So It does. I want to make you happy. Thank I, you. I hate you. I hate you. Uh, your hate uh, fuels me and uh, gets me going in the morning. Thank you, but uh, no. So uh, I don't. Uh, I don't block anybody. I don't uh, de unfriend anybody. It's very, very rare. Very rare. Well, I think you're in the position of Mister Friendly, and that could be your new name for now on. I don't know. Uh, like you know, you sounds you creepy. Don't have hostilities like I do. I'm a very hostile guy. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm I have a, a lot of anger. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I I, I have anger, but uh, I usually get uh, angry about uh, political uh, matters and so forth. I don't. Uh, I'm not uh, angry. Uh, like I, I don't get angry at people who. Uh, I don't have much of a temper, and I, you know, uh, and I don't mind. Well, I'm uh, lucky because you and I have gone at it, and uh, you know, and I'm so glad that you know I can call you up because you know, Matt, I, and I don't care. If Jerry's listening or Billy or any of those enemies of mine, mm -hmm. I happen to like you for some reason. Mm -hmm. 
you got that friendly voice. Ah. Uh. You know, like that Rush song, Wake Up, uh, The Spirit of the Radio. I, yes. I think that should be your song because you, everybody wakes up to a friendly voice. And that's wow. you. And there's just something about you that I dig, uh-huh. even though I've, I had my things with you. I I don't know what it is. You're just, uh, you know, you're, you're a young, hip guy. Of course, you're not of my generation, but I know you appreciate my generation. Well, uh, without your generation, uh, my generation wouldn't exist. Uh, so there's uh, that. Um, all right. So uh, wow. So you're going to you're going to embrace your haters going forward. Does that mean that you embrace? Yes, uh, I want to embrace them. Okay. And I want to uh, welcome them. And wow. Uh, uh, let's just have it out. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I want that to happen. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, well, I think that makes sense uh, because I think that probably the single greatest uh, flaw in your uh, marketing uh, efforts uh, so far uh, have been to uh, drive people away uh, when they take yeah. an interest in you if they don't take an interest in you in exactly the way that you would like them to. And I think that's a mistake. Well, I have very high standards, Matt, Uh You know, I'm from that old generation. I have a lot of anger. I don't like people's attitudes today. I don't like the way they uh, behave. They're very selfish, Uh self-absorbed, self-centered. I could sit here for maybe half hour, 20 minutes, and tell you what I find fault about people. It's not, in my world, Matt, you know, they're not cool. There used to be this wrestler, right, Carlito, because I know you follow wrestling. Yes. He says, I speak in the face of people who are not cool. Right, right. <laughs> That's so right. I'm like a Carlito, you know? I see. you got to be cool with me. If you're not cool, then, you know, like uh, the guy in the furniture store, he hurt my feelings, the one that's your sponsor. Oh, uh, Mike uh, from Queen City Cabinetry. Was that yeah, him? he hurt my feelings. He was a phony. Oh, he, no. He, he, no. Look, I understand he does business with you. We and love that's Mike. All good. But I tried to get him against you, and he wouldn't go for it. Right. Well, I, I think, <laughs> yes, well, I, I, he's, he's, he's a good friend. He's very loyal. Uh, by the way, speaking of good friends, uh, Dave Wally in the chat room says, uh, wait, did you just get called a young, hip guy? Well, everything's relative, Dave. Everything's relative. Um, now, uh, well, very good. Well, okay, so you're going to embrace your haters. That's, uh, I right. think that's good. And, uh, I like to start now with your permission. Uh, embracing, I, I, I give you uh, permission to embrace your uh, haters, yes. Right. No, I want the haters to come to my YouTube channel, oh. the, the Crazy Joe Show. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. And I want them to come there immediately after this broadcast or later on tonight. Uh-huh. Subscribe to my channel so, you know, you can tell me how racist I am and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a Trump supporter. and. Uh-huh. But you know what? I decided, Matt, maybe this is part of my growing process, that I want to be in the middle. I don't want to embrace the left or the right. Okay, good. I think that's good. Uh, 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 are you conservative too like that in the middle, or are you just left? No, well, I uh, – so I'm an independent. Uh, I have enormous problems with both the left and the right, but I would probably – But uh, I would probably dis- – my politics I, – I finally figured out a way to describe where people seem to agree with me. Yeah, Matt, that seems to sum you up. I say I'm center-left but with a healthy dose of libertarian thrown in. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, uh, by the way, if Charles Richardson is listening, I want to – Wave the hand to him. He was one of the first contributors to my GoFundMe page. Okay. Charles uh, from uh, Florida. Yes. Well. Yeah. So, Matt. Uh, yes. I think you and I are going to be friends from now on. And wow. I know there's going to be a lot of haters out there. I know Billy's going to call in and and Eric Pitcher. And they're going to say, hey, Matt, why do you talk to that guy for? He's our enemy. He's no good. You know what he's all about. What, what, what would you say to them about that if they did call you? and protested about our uh, newfound understanding for each other. Uh, newfound understanding, wow. Uh, well, I think that, uh, I, I don't think they would uh, judge me uh, having a conversation with you. I've had many uh, conversations with you over the years. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't think there's, uh, I mean, we don't uh, make uh, judgments about each other. We just uh, do what we do. So in other words, uh, they're not going to call you today and I know Eric, he gets, like, all messed up in his head. You know, he has, like, a nervous breakdown, this guy. I think this guy needs some uh, anxiety pills or something. Um, oh, I don't think so. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, 
Like he would say to me, I don't want you talking to him, Matt. He's not our kind of people. You know that, Matt. He's poison. Eh. Well, nobody, you know, uh, no, nobody, no, he doesn't. Uh, that's, that's not, that's not how Eric is at all. Uh, but uh, no, no one would uh, say that. And, uh, you know, I, I've tried to, uh, uh, I've I've tried to uh, give you advice over the years. Try to point you in a, a I know that. more uh, positive Matt, direction. I like you. I don't care what anybody says. From this day forward, okay. I want to proclaim my likeness for Mr. Matt and give him the proper respect that he deserves. And I might call you rat so fat so once in a while, but you know it's only to make you laugh. It's not to offend you. Yes. Well, Jerry Robinson uh, calls me something similar. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like what? I think he I think he calls me uh Matzo Ratzo or something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, um He made me I uh Jerry goes, look, I'm not closing the door on Jerry. I really? just want to know what his problem is. So we'll talk uh probably on uh email. So oh so, and uh, so, that's so, Radio Man Joe twenty eight at Yahoo. That's my email. I'm gonna give it out on the air. Radio Man Joe twenty eight at Yahoo. And uh I've gotten a lot of comments on that. Mostly negative, but um, it's a it's a good thing. I'm starting to find out it's a good thing. The so the, more, the more attention I get, the better I feel about myself. And with that said, I know you have a busy show. Yes. And uh, I thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak to you, Mr. Matt. You know, you're very handsome, well, very that, sexy young man. Well, I, I know. Thank you. And uh, well, I hope if if I if if I've uh, helped to influence you to go in a more positive direction with things, I think that's uh, I think that's good. Um, We'll uh, we'll see if it lasts. Well, I don't know, Matt. I'm not going to give any promises I, because I, yeah, uh, it, it makes me a hypocrite. Right. I am a mean guy. Mm -hmm. You know, my my motto is: the more I offend you, the better I feel about myself. Right. Uh, I am the next Howard. Uh huh. And uh, I got a lot of things to say. You know, which mm -hmm. I'm not going to say here, of course. Yeah. I will say it on my show. Yeah. But uh, I am open minded to things that people convince me that I should be open minded. That's it. Well, that's good. Okay. That's good. You know what I mean? I've, I've never been a stubborn guy, really. <laughs> it's just that uh, when I first met you and Jenny and everybody, you know, you guys gave me a hard time. and we you know, actually, I, I we, think that was terrible. You should, we, you should, both of you should we, be ashamed of yourself. We, 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 of, of, of selves. We, we, <clears throat> we actually tried to give you a lot of advice, a lot of good advice. Uh, well, can you give advice to a guy in his 60s? I mean... I've lived in New York City my whole life. I'm a, you know, I survived a, a job that was in the top ten of most dangerous. How can you give me advice when everybody's kind of screwed me over, betrayed me, betrayed my friendship, stolen from me? Um, women especially didn't treat me very well. How could you give me advice? And you wanted me to be like you? No. I, I just, uh, you know, my position. There, there are certain aspects of what you do, what you say, I should say, that I think uh, hold you down and actually yeah. uh, uh, sabotage you and do far more, uh, do you, uh, far more harm than good. That's all. I mean, I can't be like you, Matt. I mean, no, you know, I wouldn't. Then I'd be. I don't want to be a clone. Yeah, I know. I, I want to be. I want to be controversial. Yeah. I want to be over the top. Yeah. You know, my show is R-rated. You know, I'm today's shock jock, rated R, comedy star, and savior of real rock and roll music. And you know the rapper crappers, they took away my beloved rock. Well, I don't... Because it wasn't just them. I don't agree. It was their bosses, and we're not going to say who their bosses are. All right. See that? Well, I don't... Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with uh, any of that, but, uh, but that's okay. Uh, how, how do you think they made it then? Uh, they had to have there's, resources. There's, there's, I mean, they, they're not capable of doing it themselves. There's there's room for everybody, Joe. There is room for everybody. Well, but, that's true, Matt, but you've got to understand, they took our beloved rock and nobody, roll. I mean, all the crap that's no, out there, there's no good. I mean, there are I great have, bands. Don't get me wrong. I've discovered a band called Monster Trump. You ever heard of them? No, but I have great I have great rock bands on the show all the time. There's plenty of great bands out there. My my my. Okay, if you say so. My seventy-something-year-old father uh, listens to college radio, and he yeah. and he hears all kinds of great new rock bands, and he loves it. And he says we're in a golden age of music because there's more music out there online than there's ever been before of all genres, including rock music. There's so much out well, there. You know, I'm into Sabbath, Zeppelin, yeah, the Black Crows, the Stones, yeah. 
You know, and that stuff will never die. Right. It's like a fine wine. It just gets better with age. The sure. Beatles. No, I don't. I don't. Nobody's into that kind of stuff. You know, Rush, the old Rush that this. was like Zeppelin. I know you like that stuff, Matt, because that's why I like you, because I know you like it. Well, I like but, I, I like a lot of different kinds of, I, 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 I do love all that stuff. I also uh, like a lot of hip hop or rap, whatever uh, term you want to use. I, I like uh, a lot of different kinds of music. I got to admit one thing about rap, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know this is going to shock you, but okay. I definitely heard a rap song, and it was out of this world. Yeah. And I wish I knew who the artist was. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to admit that. And it's okay. T- t- you know what I mean? Wow. I loved it. Wow. Okay. All right. It was the greatest song I've heard in a long time in that, in that Good. genre. Okay, good, good. But, you know, they play in the stores, and they don't tell you the name of the music, so I get yeah. very upset about that. What I, <laughs> what I do, what I do if I want to know what, I mean, there's apps you can put on your phone that, you know, you, will, will tell you what the song is, but what I've always just, I've heard that. what I've always done, too, though, is, uh, like, if I'm in the car or something, I can't get to my phone, you know, at least not without risking a ticket. Um, if I hear something, and I don't know who it is, I just try to make a mental note of some of the lyrics. <clears throat> try to right. ca- try to catch the lyrics in the chorus, and then as soon as I have an opportunity, I'll just Google those lyrics, and I can usually find the song pretty quick. Have you ever heard of Ar- Ar- Artie? One more last thing. Have you ever heard of Artie Guthrie? Did I say his name right? You mean Arlo Guthrie? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, I discovered a song. He was kept repeating it, the, the lyrics, of Motorcycle, and it's called The Motorcycle Song. It's one of the best songs I've heard. I'm going to play that on the show. Okay. Arlo Guthrie, the motorcycle song. Very good. I think you should play that right now after I get off the air because I think it's an amazing song. I wow. I mean, he's the one that played in Woodstock, right? I think Arlo Guthrie was there. Yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah, right on. I think so. Well, um, why don't you come to New York and hang out with me, you and uh, your girlfriend, and uh, I'll get well, my girlfriend, and we'll go out to dinner. Well, I was— you want I, to consider that I, one I, of these I, days? I was, I was thinking we'll get Jerry Robinson uh, uh, to uh, hang out with us. How's that? You like Jerry Robinson, don't you? You have an I, obsession with him. I do like him. I am obsessed with him. I dream about him. Uh, He's a great man. To the point that you give him a nice big sloppy wet kiss? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right, Matt. Look, I'm going to shut it down. Yes. You gave me a lot of time. I want to switch on the air to hear you and see what the comments were. I'm sure there's plenty in the chat room. But I am Crazy Joe. I am nationwide, worldwide. I am the the man. And you wait till you buy uh, my show uh, officially gets on that. I'll, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to announce it and have all your fans listen to my show. I think they'll love it. I, I think they'll really love it. They may not love it. Who cares at this point? I, That's what, you know. Well, I'm the savior of rock and roll. That's all that matters. I like the uh, I like the positivity. I reinvented myself, Matt. Wow. I'm a renaissance man. Oh, that, that's I, uh, amazing. I didn't do the show right mm-hmm. all these years. Mm-hmm. I made a mistake, mm-hmm. and I realized what my mistake was. And it's it, I'm sitting on the gold mine right now in this area where I live. Mm-hmm. These people have no access to good music mm. except that they go on the Internet or they listen to you, right? Yes. There you go. There you go. All well, right. Well, Thank speak- you, man. You're... Oh, that's my cell phone. Yes, yes. Listen, you're very handsome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Our, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very handsome. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yes. Thank you. I don't know. Ah, I think. I mean, I'm certainly not ugly. I don't know. I think I'm average. Uh, average looks. Anyway. All right. Well. Uh, interesting. Uh, crazy Joe there with uh, a lot of positivity. Uh, I have to say though, uh, we've seen that movie before, so let's see. We'll we'll see if it holds. But. Uh, Oh, uh, Huey the Gecko, by the way, is in the chat room. He's going to be with us uh, on Friday on the show. Really looking forward to that. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Matt Connerton is not a ratso or a fatso. He is a great on-air personality pro at handling the conversation. Uh, glad you found a newfound understanding. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> and he said, uh, amen. Matt Connerton is, is a great supporter of local indie music, especially rock. The caller likes mainstream music, but to support music, you have to support local artists. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
<laughs> Scott Robinson said that ending was starting to turn into a Three Stooges bit. Um, all right. We've uh, we've got to get to a break. We're going to play a little something, and we're going to bring in our guest. Uh, we have uh, Alex Cormier joining us, and he's going to play live for us in studio, speaking of uh, great live music. But uh, while we do that, let's. Uh, we haven't played this in a while. This is a great band. Uh, or actually, it's a solo artist, but he's doing kind of doing the band thing. Uh, Eons Encoded from uh, Concord, uh, speaking of uh, great local music. This is a great track called Reconnection. And uh, this always gets a lot of positive feedback whenever I play it on the show. And we'll get uh, we'll get Alex in here. We'll show some love to our sponsors, and we have plenty more to come. Don't go away. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live from WMNH 95.3 FM. WMNH, rip the knob off. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are in hour number two, numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Today is Tuesday, June 27, 2023. And we have with us, we've got a, a musical guest uh, joining us here on the couch. Alex Cormier is here. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome to the show. You've actually been here on WMNH before, of course. Uh, you were on the morning show with uh, Peter White, I think, a, a few weeks ago or a couple months ago. or Say about uh, three weeks ago, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty recent. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny uh, saw you on there, and she was very impressed. And uh, and so uh, we're uh, excited to have you here. And, uh, and your manager, Sean, is here also at the news desk. Hello. How you doing today? Good, good. Now, what do you what do you do do for Alex? I mean, as far as uh, managing him, uh, you kind of just kind of help him with everything in terms of his career. Or? Well, I own a production company, and I've been a musician oh. for over twenty five years. So all of my contacts that I have, I'm passing along to him. Oh, outstanding! Uh, so he's able to play places that other people, I would have to say, had to earn maybe a little bit more of a of a time spent on the job site to to be allowed to do what he is able to do yeah. right out of the gate with such an amazing talent. I think that he deserves to be right up there with the seasoned veterans, and they accept him just like family. So oh, fantastic. it works out really, really well for, for the music community. That's really awesome. Does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Huey the Gecko is in the chat room. He's going to be here on Friday, and he says, oh, sweet, Alex Cormier. By the way, uh, Alex, any relation to uh, – we've got a guy here who does a show at WMNH, Paul Cormier. Any relation? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, Cormier is a, a common name around here, I think. But mm -hmm. uh, well, listen, uh, I'm dying to hear something. If you want to play for us, and then we'll uh, and then we can chat for a bit, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have plenty of time to uh, hear a bunch of songs and uh, and get to know you a little bit in between. But uh, uh, whatever you want to uh, whatever you'd like to open with. Oh, and I'll I'll open up that other mic too. So we got uh, get your guitar in there. There we go. Ooh, that sounds nice. Oh yeah, this is a very nice guitar. Yeah. <clears throat> this song is called Wake Me Up. Feeling my way through the darkness Guided by a beating heart I can't tell where my journey will end But I know where to start They tell me I'm too young to understand They say I'm caught up in a dream Will I fool past me if I don't open up my eyes? And that's fine by me. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm older. And all this time I was finding myself. And I, I didn't know I was. I try carrying the weight of the world But I only have two hands 
hope I get the chance to travel the world Yes, I don't have any plans Wish that I could stay forever this young I'm not afraid to close my eyes Life's a game made for everyone And love is a prize So wake me up when it's all over When I'm wiser and I'm older And all this time I was finding myself And I I didn't know I was lost So wake me up when it's all over When I'm wiser and I'm older And all this time I was finding myself And I, I didn't know I was lost I didn't know I was lost I didn't know I was lost I didn't know I was Wow, dude, you had a killer voice. <laughs> you sound incredible. How'd you Thank learn? You, how'd you learn to sing? Are you self-taught, or did you take lessons? Or so um, mostly self-taught. I did uh, I did choir in school for a couple of years while moving around. Um, I finally kind of fell into my senior year of high school doing some jazz. Um, I did a a. What, what do they call it a, ba- a battle of the bands in high school i yeah. was only there for about three weeks and then the music teacher brought me to the side after i i actually ended up winning it huh. um no one knew who i was so it was kind of it, it was really nice I, I knew i had something then but yeah i was able to really just kind of bring it together and 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 really hone my skills with with that music teacher yeah yeah um did you uh did you start singing at a young age on your own or Mm -hmm. okay yeah i because you've got a you've got a a a deep voice um but of course you're able to when you're singing you know you can go high with it pretty easily you know yeah you make it sound easy (laughs) which is (laughs) which is cool but um yeah uh and i noticed too now are you not using a pick when you play no sir do you not do you never use a pick you always finger pick um, I took a guitar class and I uh, stopped using it about like three fourths of the way through that. No kidding. Uh, um, why? Uh, do you just does it just seem easier? Is it just easier for you without a pick, or is there is there a reason? Uh, were you able to play better without it, or? I like the sound of it, and I I enjoy being able to kind of play multiple notes at once. I mean, yeah. you can do that with a pick. There's different styles, different ways to learn how to do that. I just I like the feel of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting that so you, that you played with a pick for so long and then stopped. That's mm-hmm. unusual. Um, is there anything that you uh, is there anything that you could do with a pick that you couldn't do finger picking or? Um, no, definitely not. Now I would have to actually like sit down and and really practice and get my my chops. It's a whole different muscle group and everything. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, how did um how did you guys connect? How did how Sean? How did you and how did you and Alex connect? Well, and Alex, and I became friends when he was younger. I was friends with his mom actually, okay. way, way back in the day. So I actually first time I saw him perform was at that high school performance he just talked to you about. Oh no, kidding! And uh, ever since then, I, I I call it the shine is what I call it when somebody just has something that you don't know where they got it from. Mm-hmm. It just seems so 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 easy, just like you said. Yeah, uh, I call it the shine. And uh, first time I saw him sing, uh, he had the shine. And as time goes on, uh, you know, and he turned into uh, a guy that I could hang out and have a beer with at the bar, and was still doing music. We join forces together. I bring his talent to the table, and the table feeds uh, us all. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah, um, that's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Well, uh, Alex, I'm dying to hear more. If you want to play another one, yeah, let's do it. Do you do you um, uh, do mostly covers, or or do you do originals too? Or I mean, you can play whatever you want, but I I do I do like to meddle around with originals. I yeah. When I do stuff like that, it's it's most mostly just off the the top of my head i don't really write music uh i I enjoy doing the arrangements and whatnot as well is is really where your craft falls in with 
Yeah, I would have to say, right? I yeah, I definitely change up the covers a lot. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And I'm just trying to once I get that general sound, it's all gonna come out there. Mm. I'll be able to re- release a lot at once. Yeah, yeah, cool. Throw it back to you By now you should have somehow Realized what you've got to do I don't believe that anybody Feels the way I do About you now Back the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out and I'm sure you heard it all before but you never really had a doubt No, I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now All the roads that lead us there winding And all the lights that light the way of blinding And there are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how mm-hmm. I said maybe Gonna be the one that saves me And after all You're my one do Gonna be the day that they never throw it back to you, no I'm sure you heard it all before But you're never really knowing what to do No, I don't believe that anybody feels The way I do about you now And all the roads that lead us there The lights light the way of blinding And there are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how I said maybe You're gonna be the one that saves me and after all, you're my wonder oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. I said maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. Yeah. And after all. Gonna be the one that saves me. You're gonna be the one that changes me. Oh 
my god that is so good that is so wonder wall is one of my all-time favorite like probably be in my top 10 of all-time favorite songs and i love the way you do it um you kind of change it a little bit and uh, when you when you uh take a song like that and and you give it some some subtle changes does that is that something that you think about or does that just kind of come naturally in terms of how it comes out of you so I'd, I'd say a little bit of both and that that's kind of what i was talking about before i played that that song is that's really what i've been trying to concentrate on is mm -hmm. uh when when i'm getting the feeling when i'm feeling the inspiration and i just kind of let it out i i memorize it yeah uh, it, i record it now and I, I really like dive deep into why i'm feeling that what the lyrics mean to me and try to just get the the emotion out into the music as much as possible yeah yeah I mean, it just, you know, I've heard that song a hundred thousand times, but it just sounded the, like the way you played it. It was like, it, it, it just, uh, it was like hearing it for the first time again, because it, it you know, you, like you make it just different enough that it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's almost like a new song, but it's not, uh, I, I just, I, I'm just really amazed at what Thank you did you, with man. it. And, and the, you know, and the time changes, it, it, that's a, that's a really nice touch. Yeah. You definitely made it your own. That's what he does. Oh yeah. Really totally. Does. Totally. Absolutely. Um, how many, do you have any idea how many songs, you know, I mean, probably a lot. I would Over think. Over a right? hundred. Yeah. 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 Now when you play out, do you do, um, you, I assume you do long sets when you, when you play out live. Uh, three hours usually. That's a long set, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, wow, so you've got enough stuff to do uh, three. Is that kind of the normal? I mean, do you ever do shorter sets? Do you ever, uh, you know, share the stage with other uh, people where you're you're not playing as long, or do you always, or usually do a three hour set? So I've been doing. Uh, so when I play by myself, I'm I'm usually always doing the three hour set. Yeah. But uh, lately, I've actually been able to start playing with a couple of bands. Yeah. Um, one of them just to. Y yesterday uh two days ago at uh sunday we we did a thing down in gloucester which was fantastic yeah the saint peter's fiesta like, when oh I okay there. yeah the uh, band over the bridge the number one reggae band actually right now oh you know, nice yeah they're called over the bridge over the bridge over the from bridge. gloucester massachusetts actually he had the honor to to share the stage with those guys that was that was quite incredible oh very cool very it was fantastic cool. yeah yeah um, now, do you ever, uh, do you always uh, just do the solo acoustic thing? Do you ever play with anybody else or you ever play in a band or anything? Or? Um, I've definitely practiced with bands, but no, not, uh, I definitely want to start yeah. playing with bands. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard it, 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 in the sense that, you know, when you're used to doing the solo thing, because obviously with, with solo, you know, you just have to rely on yourself. And then with a band, it, there's a lot that goes with it in terms of, you know schedules and <laughs> mm -hmm. compromising and everything but uh oh, yeah. but what you're doing obviously is working for you so um, i i guess uh, you know no rush in terms of playing uh, playing in a band but do you play other instruments or do you strictly guitar um i do know how to uh play the piano um yeah i've i've worked on percussion a uh, pretty good amount as well with uh the guitar that's another reason why i enjoy uh, finger picking is because it kind of allows me to be a little bit more percussive with it oh that makes sense mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah um i uh, jeez i do you want to i i'm dying to hear more i love <laughs> dude i love your voice man you got it you. you got an incredible voice by the way sean you what what do you what do you do uh because you've got quite the speaking voice. Like you said, you ever work in radio? Because you sound like a radio guy. I've, I've been asked to do voiceovers before, but I've never uh, never actually done that. I was actually yeah. a DJ at our local New Hampshire um, gentlemen's club for 13 years. Oh, so, no kidding. <laughs> so, I, so I kind of got the role in the, in the, uh, in the, in the voice uh, ah. that would, uh, would call the wild to the stage, if you would. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Sparkles to the main stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think we've met. I think we have met before yeah, yeah. as well. You look very <laughs> familiar, but you know, probably in this world and in short bursts, if you know what I mean. I might have seen you, you know, in in this uh, limelight before. So I always say too, when uh, when I'm not sure if I've met someone before, like I always say, um, I I don't like I never say I've never met somebody just because you know the music scene being the way it is. Like I always say. I always say I'm not sure I've ever met somebody. Sure. But I never say I definitely haven't met somebody because it, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you where um, I'll realize, you know, like somebody will be vaguely familiar to me. 
And then I'll realize later, like, uh, I'll probably remember like a month from now. I'll be like, oh, I know where I know Sean from. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? That happens That happens to me quite a bit. Well, I'm very blessed to be part of a whole bunch of different things which uh, which help with with his career as well. I am uh, I am uh, production coordinator at the Bank New Hampshire Pavilion, which was oh. just awarded actually the best outdoor venue. And oh, they cool. just re received the award yesterday. So I'm really proud to be part of the Bank New Hampshire oh, family. Congratulations. And I work for yeah. K Productions, which is in uh, charge of all the production there. I also own a company called 3AM Productions, and uh, I support all the local musicians in the area and go on tour with the national bands and bring him on stage with those guys oh, as well. Oh, very so, cool. And um, I also am part of a video project with Dark Tower Entertainment. And um, I have uh, uh, Eric Hansen and uh, Jordan Paul that work with me, and we are the uh, videographers for the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. We're inducting George Foreman in the Boxing Hall of Fame this year. Oh, wow. And uh, we also have a movie that was just uh, uh, accepted for international distribution called The 16th Minute. So everybody's got 15 minutes of fame, says Andy Warhol, but yep. that 16th <laughs> minute, what's going on? And we've got that captured on film. We have a documentary coming out featuring Aaron Carter and uh, Lamar Odom, uh, Ice-T, oh, wow. and a whole bunch of other great names. So that's a little bit of my background, as you asked, to help uh, you know support such a great talent right here that yeah. I love to share you know, to everybody you know that comes into a, uh, a live atmosphere and then today on the radio for all others to hear that aren't able to actually catch a show of Alex. So. Yeah, yeah. But he plays all over town here, so if anybody wants to come see him locally, uh, you know, definitely look him up on Facebook. He posts uh, where he's playing all the time, and you know, come have a nice cold beer and hang out with this guy. He's pretty cool, and yeah. that's why I support him too. He's the only artist that I actually support uh, in my busy schedule of doing yeah. all the other crazy <laughs> stuff. So. But uh, but he's a good guy, and and he and he brings a lot of joy to a lot of people, and that's what it's all about, you know. By the way, uh, Huey the Gecko said in the chat room, I saw Sean do sound for Idlewild at the Labelle in Derry. Uh, he is a great audio engineer and a pro in the biz. All right. Well, thank you very much. Very Wish nice. Love. Very thank nice. You. And. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Alex, uh, let's uh, whatever. Oh, by the way, I see Jordan Paul is in the uh, Facebook live chat. Absolutely, too, yeah, he's my partner in crime. He holds the uh, the other camera. Excellent, he's excellent. A great videographer, great personality for all the uh, all the stars. We we got to get you guys on to talk about that. We all will. That that would be that would be amazing. Well, we'd love to. Dark Tower has a lot to talk about, and that's a yeah. whole different entity from this. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and we all, we still all keep it in the family. We all share our love with all each other and. Uh, that's what makes it work. That's why that's why we all support each other. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's what so, it takes. And that's again, I appreciate you having both of us here oh, yeah, on the yeah. today. That's oh, very nice of you. Well, Thank you. Glad to do it. Absolutely. All right, Alex. Uh let's uh let's hear another one, man. I'm dying to hear some more. I do have one thing to say, which is really cool. Yeah. His partners in crime I've known pretty much my whole entire life since I've been born. So it's Pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty tight family. Alex has actually known uh my my friend uh, Eric Hansen for all of his life, really. So oh, okay. Back, back going over over 25 years as oh, well. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, I've been a family friend, too. So, oh. again, I'm really keeping it tight in the family. Yeah, you know? that's good. And uh, thank you for bringing us into yours today. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So this is a version of Chris Isaac's Wicked Game that I uh, kind of changed up a little bit from uh, another version that... This artist Philip Phillips did for uh, American Idol. The world was on fire and no one could save me but you. It's strange how desire will make foolish people do No, I never thought that I would love someone like you No, I never thought that I would lose someone like you No, I don't want to fall in love no, I don't want to fall in love This world will break your heart Nobody's falling in love What a wicked thing to say To let me feel this way What a wicked thing to do To let me dream of you 
What a wicked thing to say You never felt this way What a wicked thing to do To let me dream of, let me dream No, I don't want to fall in love No, I don't Nobody's falling in love, nobody's falling in love, nobody's falling in love, 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 nobody's gonna fall in love. And if the world was on fire and no one could save me but you, it's strange how desire will make foolish people do, oh, oh, oh. No, I never thought that I would love someone like you. No, I never thought that I would lose someone like you. No, I don't want to fall in love. No, I don't. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. If you're just joining us, we have Alex Cormier here on the couch playing guitar and singing and just sounding amazing. He is our uh, our musical guest, and and we've got uh, his manager, Sean. Sean, what's your last name again? O'Brien. They call me actually S-O-B. So. Oh, okay. So. What was, oh, I get Sean it. Sean O'Brien, S-O-B. S-O-B right? I it took good, me, good acronym for you, right? Took, took me a second. Uh, <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. Sean, I don't really care. Sean is Alex's manager as well as uh, many other things as well. And uh, got a lot going on. And uh, no, it's really cool that you're able to uh, take uh, all of your experience and knowledge and, and help uh, Alex. And uh, it's just an amazing. He's, he's amazing. Yeah, the only thing I said to him, <laughs> I said, the only thing I can't give you is tenure and, 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 and that stage time. But I can give it to you now. I'll give right. you a lot now to make up for the time that you, you didn't have it before. If yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it, it really works well. He's He's been in front of uh, some really great audiences. Uh, we did a gig last year. And... Uh, uh, he was the uh, the filler in between the band while they were taking a break, and at the end of the night, uh, the the audience uh, screamed an encore, and the other band started another song, and they're like, "No, no, 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 we oh. we we want Alex back up for our encore," and the other guys were like, "Whoa!" Oh wow! Holy crap! And That's then amazing. then those what twenty five uh, bikers and their girlfriends ended up at his next gig, like three and days just, later, and commandeered yeah. the whole the whole next venue, and and they had a blast. So oh, that's he's awesome. making friends even in, in was that a Rundle, Maine? I think that was. That was Iron Tails, I believe. Yeah, Iron Tails. That was yep. that was over a hundred miles away. He's got his fan base going on, you know. Oh, very cool, very cool. Uh, yeah, getting some love in the uh, chat room. Uh, Huey the Gecko says, "Great control, loved that Wicked Games." Uh, believe it, I dig it. The Naruto is it? How do you say that? Naruto. Naruto, no, but Naruto, yes. Uh, I gotcha. And um, also, uh, Dave Wally says, "What a spectacular voice! Start writing, amazing voice, feel arrangements." Very cool. And uh, our friend Shannon. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had a call. It looked like uh, Shannon was on the line, but uh, uh, we lost her. Um, very nice. Uh, do you want to you want to play another one? I kind of I kind of just want to keep going and hear more. Oh, actually, hang on a second. We do have a call. Sweet. Shannon is on the line. Hi, Shannon. Hello. I just wanted to say hi to Alex. And um, I, I talked to you on the morning show. Uh, you have a beautiful voice. I'd love to sing with you sometime. Oh, that would be fantastic. I do remember you from, uh, it, I think it's about a month ago now. Yeah, uh, the Peter White morning show. Mm-hmm. Morning show with Peter White. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was asleep, and by the grace of God, I woke up in time, because I had my earpiece in and listening to the, well, I was asleep, but I was listening, but I woke up just in time to hear you. So. Oh, very good. You, you have a gift. Yes, he does. He certainly does. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well. 
And thank you, Sean, and, and thank you, Matt, for having him. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank All you, right. Shannon. All yeah, right. be well. All right, bye-bye. All right, very nice. Always nice to hear from Shannon. By the way, uh, the studio line is open, so if you have any questions or uh, feedback or anything at all for Alex, uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, just got to uh, get in between songs, however, because uh, we're making them work because uh, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, if, uh, if you'd like to do another one, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I can do that. All right. And if you're just joining us, uh, Alex Cormier is here with us live in studio. So this next song I kind of, I do pretty often. It's definitely in my top three favorite songs to play.
Fantastic. If you're just joining us, we have Alex Cormier here in studio live uh, performing on Matt Connerton Unleashed here on WMNH 95.3 FM. And Sean O'Brien is here with us as well. And uh, let me give the uh, studio line again if you have any questions or anything at all for Alex. Uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, Miriam Banish uh, joins us in the chat room and says, I love his voice. I've uh, been listening the whole time, but making dinner as well. So <laughs> providing some some uh, dinner music there for Miriam. <laughs> oh, that's always nice to cook too. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, now, how often uh, how often do you play out, Alex? Are you uh, doing shows every week or? So right now, about two three times a week. Oh, excellent. Um, sometimes more than that. Sometimes less. Yeah, yeah. Um, busy summer ahead. Or I guess we're in it now, but busy summer. <laughs> yep. Uh, after this weekend, uh, next month, and the one after that, I'm going to be getting a, a lot more than uh past couple of months, and I'm getting more every week. So Yeah, know, yeah. Every phone call, every email, it's uh, something I get to enjoy. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. Now, Sean, do you do all the booking? Do you? Uh... Well, we do it together. I have uh, venues that I can place him in. He... Uh... Is by example, he'll be playing a place and someone will walk up to him and say, hey, how can I have you in my bar? Yeah. He'll either take their information or forward it to me and we just we just get it done. We're all, it's all a team effort here. So. Yeah, yeah. And we also join uh, stages with other great musicians in town to help support other events as well. Yeah. So we yeah. work with, uh, you know, Nate Comp, Dimitri Papanicolo oh, yeah. of Not So Costly Productions, Paul Costly, all those guys. We work with all those guys too and they love us. Yeah. And uh, Dimitri books him uh, all over New England. So some of your uh, guests will be able to see him you know, outside of the Manchester area, if they uh, if they watch him on Facebook or whatnot. Excellent, excellent. Is a uh, uh, Paul Costley? Is he still he's still going? Paul Costley's still going strong. He so, has sold his uh, production company or he sold his booking company. Excuse that, me. That's what I heard. That's yeah, why to, I wondered. To Dimitri, yeah. which has been a family friend of mine for over oh. twenty years as well. So oh, perfect. Again, keeping it in the family. That's what we do. You know, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's great. And uh, you know, he's got all the same great venues and more. And uh, he's. Cool. Uh, He's very active in the music uh, scene as well with his decomp trio and uh, yep. whatnot as well. So, yeah, yeah. You know, very we, hang, we hang out with the, with the guys that are busy and successful, and guess what? We automatically become busy and successful. It's amazing how that rubs off. Yes. On <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, yeah for any uh, for any line of work for any absolutely. Uh, for any profession. You know, or... I always tell Alex, we're just going to have to put you in that room, and then you're going to own that room. Yeah. And we put him in the room, and he owns the room. So, yeah. There you go. You know, so there you go. Alex, do you ever get uh, do you ever get nervous at all? You have, you have any stage fright or or uh, you seem pretty you seem pretty even, but uh, used to be wicked bad, yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, um, pretty much like un, almost uh, unmanageable. Uh, wow. Tea, drinking uh, water, and just keeping myself nice and and level. I have to pr I have to really get myself situated behind that beforehand yeah and even even today i i got a little nervous no kidding yeah we're well, always supposed to get nervous it's it's kind of fun getting nervous but it's, you're not yeah. nervous anymore it's not uh it's not the same you know i i love that uh that unknown every time you enter a new room i think it's great right you right. see the jaws drop on a lot of people going wow yeah oh my god and the reaction <laughs> of the room feeds him and then he forgets how nervous he is it's all good from there, you know? yeah Usually. yeah <laughs> Cool. Well, you want to, uh, geez, uh, before we run out of time, uh, I got to hear one more. You want to play one more? Yeah, I got one more. All right. Sweet. Alex Cormier, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, my version of No Diggity, inspired by uh, Chet Baker. Shorty, get down, good Lord Baby, push and fall over town It's strictly bitch, she don't play around She cover most ground She got game by the pound Two play, I use my forte We meet in every day But a big could play away But I can't get that girl out of my mind, dog. But I think about that girl all the time, y'all East side to the west side She pushing fat rides And no surprise She got tricks and stacks She stacking up cash She fast when it comes to the guys But by no means I phrase And she's on when she got to have it Well baby you're the perfect thing mm. 
I like the way you work it, you know, diggity. I got to bag it up. I like the way you work it, you know, diggity. I got to bag it up. I like the way you work it, you know, diggity. I got to bag it up. I like the way you work it, nah, 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 nah. She's got classic style and street knowledge by the pound. Who oh, hold me never act while she keep it low key on her profile. Well, the catching feelings is a no. Well, you know how it goes. I say, hers the words, spins the verb, and lovers ain't free, so freak what you heard. And away, away. That girl look good hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. She's got classic style hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Oh man, that girl look good hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I like the way you work it yeah. No diggity I got to bag it up I like the way you work it, you know, diggity. I got to bag it up, bag it up. I like the way you work it, you know, diggity. I got to bag it up. I like the way you work it, no, 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 no. That's uh, my favorite version of that song that I've ever heard. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. Man. And the last one. And the last one. Too, right? <laughs> yeah. He does it different every time. He gives me the oh, chills really? yeah. every time, too. So I, I don't know what to expect sometimes. It's really great. Right, He'll right. sit with a song, and he'll marry it, and uh, and then all of a sudden it has a new life the next time I hear it. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so before we do run out of time, I want to make sure uh, that everyone knows, uh, Alex, where to find you online, or, or Sean, maybe you want to take that, but I want to make sure that uh, people know uh, where to find Alex as far as uh, shows and uh, everything you got coming up. Sure. Alex Cormier can be found on Alex Cormier uh, Acoustic on Facebook and his personal account, Alex Cormier, C-O-R-M-I-E-R, and obviously Alex, A-L-E-X for Alex, but... Uh, he posts all of his shows and uh, past shows there, and uh, you'll see that he's got thousands and thousands of views in a lot of his videos that we've uh, that we posted over the last even year that uh, we've been really going strong here. It's getting yeah. big quick. Yeah, yeah it really yeah. is. So I can't give him tenure, but I'm going to give him all the stages that everybody else has earned because I think he earned it. I really do. Yeah, he yeah. He definitely sounds like it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's fantastic. And what what's the next uh, show? Like, you got anything this week coming up that you want to plug specifically or? So I believe um, this Saturday coming up, I'll be playing at uh, Blue Aqua on Elm Street. Oh, oh right. very nice. And yeah. we'll be over at uh, Casey's Rib Shack tonight. We're going to try to throw a few songs in there over at the uh, the Paul Costley open mic there with Nate and Dee. So, oh, very cool. Yeah, so we're heading over there, I think, after. Go get some good food and go hear some good tunes with Alex, I think. It seems time. like it seems like he probably fits in kind of anywhere, right? Like like you've got a lot of opportunities where you can kind of slide him in. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's and, uh that's good. And if I'm not playing music, I'm learning the uh other side of it too. So excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, he's been great on my road crew when we do bigger shows and whatnot. He's been coming along with me, he's learning the ropes and he's uh, been a great help there too. So and that's a great political side for him because he gets to know everybody because they're they oh my god this guy totally helped me out and then like you play too and then the embracing is just a lot deeper you know yeah yeah so oh that's fantastic yeah. that's fantastic well thank you both uh, Sean and uh, Alex Cormier thank you so much my friend you, you sound incredible uh, we're just about out, out of time we got to go uh, but uh, if you miss any part of today's show. Uh, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and at my website, MattConnerton.com. And uh, if you did miss anything, please, you got to go back and you got to go back and listen to this guy. Um, just incredible. Um, and of course, if you are listening live on Tuesday, coming up next is uh, on WMNH is Through the Stage Door uh, with the great Rob Dion and uh, followed by a replay of Friday night's Retro Spectrum Radio. And don't forget to be back bright and early, uh, 7 a.m. for the morning show with Peter White. And you can also go back in the archive and find uh, Alex's uh, performance on the morning show with Peter White, because uh, I, I assume you did some different songs on that show. So 
Uh, mm-hmm. So if you want uh, even more uh, Alex Cormier here on WMNH, uh, you can find uh, find the show that he was on uh, with Peter as well. So, gentlemen, thank you again uh, both uh, so much. Thank you, Matt. And thank uh, you. absolutely, absolutely, my pleasure. And we are out of time. And uh, oh, uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow. Jeez, I can't remember now who we have on the show tomorrow. I know we've got Huey the Gecko on Friday. Um, tomorrow we've, oh yes, the Geritones, uh, will be, uh, our musical guest, uh, tomorrow on the show. So looking forward to that a lot as well. And, uh, all right, we're out of here. I'll talk to y'all a little bit later. Bye right. everybody. Thank you. <laughs>